garage door openers. They're a wonderful thing. We've got this giant 12 foot tall garage. This is a big truck. This seat's out. I'm 6'2. This truck's almost eight feet tall. <laughs> I need the tall <laughs> garage. Jeep's lifted to. That's a big heavy door. 12 foot tall door. It's nice like RVs and stuff, but we have, a, we have this big garage. So garage doors are wonderful. You hear the beeping. This one's got a battery backup. I gotta put a new battery in that. But I like the Chamberlain garage openers a lot. They're Wi-Fi. I can use my phone or Amazon Alexa to open the door. Uh, I got my Alexa enabled, you see I already responded, my Alexa enabled fire uh, smoke detector. Well, the back of my garage has this little door, also 12 feet tall, that is kind of painted open. The boat and the pool and the canal are all back there. Um, it's designed to let you drive through if you need to get back there. Right now, the jet skis are in the way. But if you need to get back there. <laughs> so, today, I'm going to install another Chamberlain smart garage opener. See, I've got a, a golf cart garage. <laughs> How many people have their own golf cart garage? This guy's got a golf cart garage. My golf cart garage has a nice Chamberlain. They all link together. I can open them all together. And I get notifications on my phone. They open. They can use the same keypad. So, today's project is to get this installed. And I got to run power. This is going to be fun. So, I got a couple options. Garage door openers just, you know, they plug in. So, I can tap it. I got an outlet over there. I can relocate it here. Or, which is, with people who aren't comfortable with electricity, I recommend this. You can just run an extension cord. Totally fine. It's just... 120 volt. I got out right there. So I'll probably end up just doing that. Um, at least to test it. And then maybe another time I'll relocate that outlet up there. I can't tap into the water heater outlet. It's 240 volt. Different than 120. I can't tap into the light every time I turn the switch off. <laughs> I want to have power for the, But I've got power right there. Probably test it, already check. So I can relocate that here. But I think this video, I'll just run a cable down, show you how to do that way. And, we, and maybe you're not comfortable running electricity. It's a good option. So let's get started. Got everything lined up. First thing we're going to do is assemble the rail and put the trolley on it. That's the trolley. That's the rail. And the end will connect. We got her assembled. There is the trolley. There is the U bracket that attaches to there. And see the yellow sticker down there? And we're hitting the top. So, we just have one to write. Cool. Now we're going to attach it to that bad boy. All right. Got it lined up. I'm going to start driving these in. I used the box the packaging that came in. It's the right size to hold it nice and level so I can tighten this up. Not worry about it bending this or doing any damage. Next step is to put the carrier pulley here in this hole. This is the nut they're going to use for that, the bolt. You see a little bit of grease in there. If they don't have any grease, we're going to recommend putting just a little bit in there to lubricate this. It's going to spin a lot. Oops. And then we're going to thread this through. There's two sides. There's a side of a hook and a side of like some bolt holes on it. The hook side is what runs to um, the trolley back there. I'll bring it up here to do it. So, all right, we'll do that. And when you do this, this is pretty big, this part. Run this through first. Do that through there first. And then this piece can slide it right behind it. So it's kind of, a, it won't fit the other way. So, cool. It's threaded through to attached. And you'll see these little tabs all along. Um, these are to stop the trolley from going any farther. So this one you definitely want to have up. I mean, the trolley can't go past it. It'll hit the tab and stop. So, um, so get that flipped out. It just doesn't ship if it's flipped out because it makes it easier to pack when it's flipped down. <laughs> That's one reason. Next step does require a little bit extra care. You're gonna thread that belt all the way down around that guy and back to here, ensuring there are no twists before you attach. Uh, the spring bolt. 
All right. This is where most people make their mistakes on this install. It's the hardest part to do. Um, we got several pieces here we're going to be working with. This comes threaded onto here. Be careful with this. That's going to open up. So sit right here. Open up and provide tension on this. So we need to just work slowly towards that. <laughs> we'll start setting up step by step here. First thing we're going to do is attach this to this. <laughs> okay, you can see how it attaches. A little chain link like that. Now we're going to put this into here and attach that bolt and uh, just hand tight it first. Something you pay attention to, you'll see there's like a flat side to it and there's a flat, there's a flat side right there. This side's flat, I don't really tell from this video or not, but that's the help keep it from spinning while you're using it. We push it through, we hand tighten this. Still got pretty good tension on it, but you just want to check to make sure we're not up and down. There's no twist in it. This is the last time to check for twists before you commit to this. Because this next step, you're going to put a screwdriver in a little hole right there. And then you're going to use your wrench. And you're going to tighten this until that pops. And it's going to pull everything really tight. All right. This expanded out when that bolt slipped. Nice tension along there. That's what you want. Ultimum. O optimum belt tension. We're gonna put this guy on. It snaps on right here. And there's two bolts. It's right in right there. Raw assembly is complete. <laughs> now the installation. Um, you're gonna have two brackets. One's gonna have like a flat side. Get up. This is this one is on the garage door itself. This one attaches to the wall. Um, you want to check and make sure if your garage door, if you're mine doesn't, I got a steel door, that middle spline right there, I got holes drilled everywhere, attaches perfectly. We got a piece of wood attached to the wall uh, from the, when the house was built, you know, they're ready for a garage opener. Um, you will need that too. Uh, we're going to attach this guy to the wall um, up between 18 inches and a foot above the garage door. There's no exact measurement that's needed because the attachment from this, the door is variable. See that black bar there? You can, you can adjust it, make it the right length. It doesn't need to be perfect. So we'll install uh, this guy first. I got my drill. Good to go. And we're going to um, run some beginning holes, and then we'll mount it to the wall with that. Well, four of those. <laughs> so we measured up 18 inches. The bottom with that, we did our first pilot hole. I got it centered right above the garage door opener. I recommend using these deep socket ones to drive it in because it's got the walls on the side. You need something to reach down deep inside of there. All right, we got that installed. Next step is we're gonna attach this to that bracket. I'm gonna elevate this to make the angle a little less severe. That's, that's a, a long way up. Let me show you what I got rigged up here. <laughs> dit, dit. <Whoa. laughs> Shop's a little harder alone, but you know. There's my clevis pin and the ring holder. Just gonna attach it right up there and make this a permanent resident. The main reason people watch my channel is for tips and tricks. So here, not installed yet, but I'm using the open garage door to station it near where I need to be installed. I can lift it up the rest of the way, and install my bracket right there. Make this much easier myself. Give you a view of what's going on up here. I'm gonna take this bracket, I'm gonna attach it, something like that. And attach those guys to the bracket and that there and we should be good to go so here's what I got going <laughs> mounted there mounted there mounted there I'm gonna tighten these down this is gonna bend a little bit which is fine I did this so it'd be nice and straight and centered and right about there when I'm done tightening it I'll tighten it right where I want it Woo, look all the way down there. 
All the way down. And it's mounted. So we got attached to the garage and do the wiring. This is a good start. Do that next. You can see there's multiple ways you can attach the opener to the ceiling. They did like an A-frame style thing here. I did like an H-frame over here. The golf cart garage. Got golf cart garage. The little wild A-frame thing they did. I don't know why they just went straight out, but whatever. Uh, mine looks really good. Looks really sharp. So um, let's get some wiring done. Oh I, wait. First we gotta attach the bracket to this and that the garage door. That's pretty easy. Do that now. So depending on your door, you might need additional bracing on the back here when installing this. And this door does. It's a steel door, it's a heavy door, so they want additional bracing up here. So instead of going in the door with these, I'm gonna drill some holes in this, put these through, put an additional bracing bar back here, and push it all together. Give me a little extra strength there, a little durability here. Well, pulling power is good. Looks pretty sharp. Installed. I'll need a lot more pull cord than <laughs> what they gave me. Uh, I can't reach. So, I need some more string. Um, I'm just going to mount the door button like here. This isn't like a traditional car garage or anything. It's just the rear end of our actual garage. I, just, I think it's the door button just like on this piece of wood right here. Just boop. So that's the next step with the wiring. Button first. Mountain, this is pretty easy. There's a hole here, and a hole you can access from the flip right here. R drive your screw in first, your bottom screw, mount it, and drive your top screw through it. Pretty easy. And then we're gonna have, put the wires on now, because we'll take it back off. <laughs> so we'll strip the wires, attach the red and white, then we can start wearing them up to the, the box. If you have drywall, or like we do parkour board down here for the, um, let's see, battery replacement, beep, need a battery, it's not a, not a smoke alarm, those are easier to replace, this is a 12 volt battery, I gotta order, anyway, uh, if you have access to the back of the wall, or you can fish the wall, it's a good way to run the wire being um, hidden, so this is ideal installation, we, we had access back there, um, for this, no access, just a piece of wood can run the wall, has to run the wires down anyway, um, for the sensors, so if you look at this garage door, sensor wires are exposed anyway. I can run it right next to the sensor wire over there. And just another wire running through here. Barely notice. Now here's your strippers. There's your wire. Red on red, white on white. Can't make it any easier. Um, you'll see those little divots. Like here and right there. <coughs> it's running the wire through, in case you don't know. Let's run the wire up to the top one just like that. Another tips and tricks time. I'm gonna install the sensors now, run the wires up there. Less time we up and down the ladder. Run them all at the same time, wire them at the same time. So these attach to the track here. Really, just like that. Uh, I'll need both hands to do it right, but you clip something right here. And you should have little markers on your door, they're the same height on both sides. Um, so you can use that to line them up. It's clipped on, you can see I got little holes. I can use there's the same two holes over on that side. And they line up, so I'm helping myself out here. I'm um, getting the lining up done in advance. So, one shot straight across. Still on the floor. <laughs> see the little wing nut holds this in place. I'll run this wire up, just kind of get started and have the uh, button cut off the pass. So, do the same thing on the other side. So, all we're doing as we run this up is we're finding a nice secluded place. You've got these little guys. They only give you 10 in the package, you might need more, but just run it all the way up. Five on each side, because once I get there, I don't need any more. I'm just going to tuck it. Just going to show how I'm running it here. Going up, 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 and I'm just going to kind of tuck it in there. If you have um, a crawl space of the garage, I'll just go through and just lay it on the, the cross beams. There's not high voltage; it's like extraordinarily low voltage. <laughs> it's not starting to fire or anything. So run it there, then run it across, and I can wire it. 
a lot of that of time. <laughs> so the cables are on. Pretty well hidden too. Got them all the way coming right to there. They're all on the side of the yellow antenna. Where are you at? <laughs> the yellow antenna. That's the wiring side. I'm gonna get up there, pop the light cover off, and splice and wire these in. Your instructions may differ, but this is pretty common. Um, we take the two whites and the two blacks off the safety sensors, twist them together like so, and we're going to push them in the holes. What you want to do is you take your finger or screwdriver, push that down as you push them in, and then let go. It holds it in place. And they're wired. Got them up coming out of the way so they don't touch that hot light <laughs> once we install one. All right, let's get some power to this. Amber light. Green light, no adjustments. Using my little hole trick, they centered up right away. So I'm just using an extension cord right now. Totally fine, uh, not a permanent solution, obviously. Uh, I'm gonna reroute power up there, but just, just get this, this video is not about electricity, this video is about garage openers. So let's get the, so now once you have it all wired, you're gonna follow the instructions in your manual to adjust uh, the stop power, the pull power, and everything else. So let's walk through that a little bit. So for this next step, I've got the trolley disconnected, and uh, you'll see why in a second. Um, we're gonna program, so you hold this button here, and then you hit up. You see the trolley moving, all by its lonesome, and your desired stop height. I'm gonna go just shy of that. That's good there. And then the down height. The down height should be where the trolley is right now. And let's go adjust the trolley so it locks. All right, we made our adjustments. We programmed the stop and the down, stop and the up, <laughs> both stops, down, down, and up. Ooh, I'm tired. This has been a long install. All right, the moment of truth. Was there any doubt? Now we can walk out to the pool. Walk out to the water. Not want the garage door anymore to go that way. Another great video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Keep upgrading your life.